So our next session is on unlocking the job opportunities in Australia for international students specifically and is being presented by Mr. Nagendra Vest. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Kar. So uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. This session is uh, about uh, job opportunities for international students in Australia, part time as well as full time. Let me just quickly share my presentation with you. I hope you are uh, you all are able to see the the, the presentation in front of you. So Australia has been uh, one of the favorite destinations for international students uh, for a long, long period of time. Uh, the reason being uh, we have the top colleges, top institutes of the world in Australia. Besides that, uh, Australia has beautiful uh, uh, landscape, uh, bustling cities, uh, welcoming uh, environment, and that has made Australia one of the favorite destinations for international students. There have been some slacks during COVID, but uh, after COVID restriction lift, uh, lift, uh, you know, was lifted, we have again seen the center of gravity has shifted to Australia for international students. And why Australia is favorite for uh, uh, international students? That's something we'll we'll discuss in detail in next few slides. But before that, uh, you know, uh, just quickly, uh, I will cover all the products we have and why it is important to understand uh, uh, what are these products and how these products will help international students in their uh, overseas education journey. Any uh, student who aspire to go abroad and study, they have to clear uh, English language test. Right? Uh, there are certain tests uh, defined by all the universities across the world, and they need to get minimum marks uh, that gauges their uh, proficiency in English, English language. So pttutorials.online, that's online uh, platform uh, which helps students get uh, good marks, their desired scores uh, in English language. So we have uh, more than 50 tests, more than 25,000 subscribers have uh, used this pttutorials.online product and uh, they have got their desired band. We have 24 by 7 support, more than 50 practice tests. So you can get uh, the required score you want. We have industry expert tutors, uh, who teaches PT. Coming to the next product, uh, IELTS tutorials.online. Uh, there are two prominent tests, uh, PT and IELTS uh, tutorials. That test is being accepted by all the universities across the globe. Uh, uh, so uh, either you can take PT test you can, or you can take IELTS test. Likewise, PT, uh, we have uh, wonderful tutu uh, the tutors who can help you get the desired band in IELTS. Uh, once you clear your IELTS or PT exam, uh, you will require uh, to get a health insurance policy to get visa. So that is one of the condition to get visa that you have overseas uh, student health cover if you're an international student. So get my, if you go to getmypolicy.online, you can compare uh, the rates of various healthcare service providers and what are the different ranges of illness you want to cover in your policy. We have hassle-free payment process, and you also meet the visa condition. The next product is cctutorials.online. So once you have cleared your uh, uh, PT IELTS exam, you have come to Australia, you have the, the policy. So once you finish your studies, uh, you know uh, if the students want to progress their career in Australia, they want to get PR, so they can appear for CCL test that stand for Credential Community Language Test. And if you pass this test, you get additional five points. Uh, we have to be mindful of this fact that uh, in Australia, we have a very, very competitive uh, point system PR uh, method, which means every point is important. So if you clear CCL uh, test, for example, if you have pro proficiency in Hindi or maybe in Bengali or Urdu or Punjabi or Gujarati, so if you can take that test and you can get additional five points. So cctutorials.online will help you get, uh, uh, get those five points. The next one is professionallyaustralia.com.au. Now this is another platform, uh, wonderful opportunity to be uh, job ready, to get good job in Australia. And besides that, if you clear a professional year program, you also get additional five points 
which means five points for CCL and five points for professional year. Now, professional year program is uh, something for uh, engineers, for soft, for uh, people who are working in IT industry, as well as well as people from the accounting background. Now, next uh, pro the product is OcuSearch. Uh, that's a very, very revolutionary and next generation product that's also in mobile app. Uh, it's a it's a it's that will help you explore visa options, state nomination criteria and eligibility. So uh, you can see your eligibility based on your skill uh, using this app. So why we have created all these products? Uh, there is a background to it. Uh, 15 years back, uh, the founder of this company, Mr. Dhamendra Patel, he came to Australia and he had to go through a lot of hardship. Then he then he had a vision that uh, how do I make the life of international students uh, easy, comfortable, and they get all the required information or the platform to be successful in Australia. And with that thought process, the team was created and hence all these products. So all these products are revolutionary and they will help you at every step of the way in uh, fulfilling or uh, completing your international uh, uh, studies journey. Now coming to the agenda uh, about uh, today's session, what all we're going to cover. As an international student, uh, uh, you will have a lot of questions on your minds. You know, how's the life in Australia? What are the job opportunities we have? Uh, what are the advantages I will have if I, I work uh, uh, in Australia? Work regulations and student visa requirement. A lot of questions you will have on your mind. Understanding employment, employment entitlements, industries and sectors. Which are the sectors, industries we have job opportunities? How do we identify uh, goals for my career? Uh, we will also share with you some self improvement techniques. How do we navigate the system? That's something we'll talk about. Another important thing which we are going to cover is what Australian employers employers are seeking in um, in a candidate. How does the hiring process look like? And finally, uh, how do you process your job application and prepare for D-Day? That's your interview. So I promise if you focused next 45, 45, 40, 45 minutes on this session, your journey in Australia will be much, much smoother. Now let's talk about some facts. Australia actually need uh, international students. Right? It's a country of excess. It's a beautiful country, and uh, if you look at some some survey, you know, graduate outcome survey, seventy eight point five graduates landed full time job after passing out. That's a very healthy rate. Over employment rate for both full time and part time employee for recent graduate is about eighty eight point three percent. And within three years of finishing their studies, nine, nearly nine in 10 graduates are employed full time. So uh, the hit ratio is about 90%. If you compare this with uh, most of the countries in the world, the, the, the ratio would be somewhere between 20 to 40%. But however, in Australia, if you finish your graduation, 90% people get the job. So I'm sure that gives a lot of comfort, a lot of confidence to international students when they come to Australia. Mindset counts. Uh, very, very important point. When you come to Australia, it is very important that you are open minded, right? You are resilient. Paths will not be linear. There will be a lot of uh, bumps along the, along, the, along the road. You know, the journey will not be smooth. Uh, uh, one has to be very, very uh, clear and mentally prepared about this fact. So I'm sure uh, people who desire to study abroad, you know, uh, uh, they must have designed or you know their life they they want an outstanding life beautiful life so if you want outstanding life we have to put in outstanding effort as well so there will be a lot of hardship a lot of difficulties but at the same time uh, uh, the life will be very very rewarding and fruitful at the end of the journey moving on to the next point advantages of part time and uh, full time uh, job opportunities you get practical experience while studying, right? Those skills which you learn, right? Maybe uh, you develop your communications. 
uh, customer service skills, uh, problem solving, uh, networking, uh, collaboration. These are all skills which you acquire at early stage of your life that is transferable, which means the skills which you acquired that can be used throughout your journey in Australia or in your career. Right, it's just like a, uh, just like a, you know, doing cycling or swimming or maybe horse riding. Once you have learned those those life skills, you will know that throughout your life. The similar kind of skills you acquire once you start working in Australia. Of course, when you start working in Australia, you also in, improve your communication skills. Uh, you also earn extra income to support living expenses. Right, the 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 minimum wages is pretty decent, so you earn pretty well if you work. Uh, in Australia to meet your living expenses. It also will help you to foster cultural exchange and networking opportunities when you work with people from diverse uh, background, diverse, diverse ethnicities, you develop better understanding, better appreciation for different cultures, a different environment. And that's how you become a better professional. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, this slide talks about work regulations and student visa requirements, uh, eligibility, eligibility for international students. All international students can work as part time, uh, uh, effective 1st July. There was a period when all the uh, all the student, international students were allowed to work full time, but that deadline is finishing 30th June 2023. So effective 1st June 2023, 1st July 2023, all international students uh, can work only part time. Uh, there is only an exception. The the students who are working in aged care industry, they can work till uh, they can work full time till 31st December. But by and large, all other students uh, can only work part time. Now, how do you get started when you come to Australia? Right, uh, you will need the TFN number. That stand for tax uh, file number. Uh, file number. So that's very easy process. You go to uh, Australian Taxation Office website. You just need your passport and your uh, student visa copy, and you can generate the TFN online. Another uh, way you can start working is you can work as a sole trader by getting ABN number, Australian business number. Uh, so the, there, there are upsides and downsides of ABN. If you are working on ABN, which means you have complete control of your finances. But uh, when you work as an employee, you are entitled for certain leaves. And also there is uh, uh, certain contribution, close to about 11% contribution uh, made by your employer on your salary. So you don't get uh, paid uh, if you work as an ABN as a sole trader. But you can, as an ABN, if you work, you're working as an ind independent contractor, you can work at your own pace, at your own convenience. Maximum hours permitted while studying. Uh, all international students, so effective 1st July, are allowed to work 24 hours a week, which means every four, yeah, fortnight uh, you can work 48 hours. Monthly, close to about 96 hours or 100 hours, give and take. That's the maximum hours permitted while studying. Work conditions and condi uh, uh, work rights and condition for post study. So you got to make sure that you keep yourself updated with uh, all the visa conditions. Uh, you go to government websites. You can reach out to migrant agents, agents to make sure that you are on the right side of the law. Uh, you have the valid, uh, valid legal status to work in Australia. So in future, in case you decide to progress your career in Australia or you want to apply for PR, you know, this all these documents are scrutinized by the Department of Home Affairs and you don't want to you know, have any unfavorable outcome. To ensure that you are uh, you are getting your uh, uh, PR or you know, your long term association in Australia, you are always, always on the right side of the law. Now, this slide tells us about uh, the work rights. Uh, you know, uh, the first point is job responsibilities. So as an employer, every uh, company would want you to be successful, but it is very it is your responsibility to, to understand that what are the what are the assigned tasks? What will be your duties? What will be specific uh, uh, goals or uh, areas basis which your performance will be evaluated? So you should have absolute, absolute clarity on that. A great enumeration, establish and confirm the mutually agreed uh, pay rate. Uh, 
there are good things. You know, initially their work hours was 20 hours. Now it has increased to 24 hours per week for international students. Also, another good news for international student is, um, you know, the minimum wages have also have been re revised. It has increased by 5.5 percent too. Now, uh, the, the revised minimum wages uh, hourly rate is twenty three point twenty three dollars. That's pretty pretty good rate uh, for uh, for minimum wages. Now, employment status determine your employment status as either full time, part time, or you are working as casual employee, right? As an international student, as I mentioned before, you can only work as part timer. Work schedule specify the start and end time of your work shifts, which means uh, there could be possibility you could be depending upon the sector or industry you will be working in morning shift, day shift, uh, uh, afternoon, evening or night shift. So you need to have absolute clarity what shift are you we are going to work. Applicate applicable awards or agreements. Determine if there is an award or registered agreement covers your job role, which means if you work evening or night shift or if you work over weekends or on public holidays, they are premium paid or above, over and above your daily rates. So that varies from 115% to 200%. So you need to have the clarity what are some of the, the additional benefits you get or awards you get if you work on this these days. Some important websites, you know, Fair Work, WorkSafe, WorkCover. Uh, if you have any questions related to your employment about your uh, uh, your daily wage rate, wages, your leaves, uh, about your uh, your benefits, you can go to these sites. Uh, and get information, required information. Another important site is uh, paycalculator.com.au. This is a wonderful site. If you don't have visibility or clarity that uh, bases your compensation, what will be the tax deduction? You can just go to this site. You can write your, you can just mention your annual CTC uh, and you will get approximate uh, your net take home salary after deduction, tax deduction. Now moving on to industries and sectors for job opportunities. So Australia provides a wide area for job opportunities and uh, in all these sectors, I've covered major sectors where we have a lot of job opportunities. The first one is hospitality and tourism. Right, as I mentioned before, before you know, Australia has stunning uh, landscape, uh, landscape uh, bustling cities and very renowned hospitality. So international students who have the um, flavor for customer service, good communication skills, and uh, who are willing to provide outstanding customer experience. There are a lot of job opportunities we have in this sector. The next one is retail. Now, retail also provide uh, extensive job opportunities, right from uh, electronics to fashion and uh, grocery store and shopping centers. We have a uh, 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 very, very flexible you know, uh, shift hours in retail sector. Somebody who is good in customer service, service problem solving, a lot of job opportunities in retail sector as well. Now, uh, information technology, uh, Australian IT in, uh, industry is seeing a rapid growth. So there are a lot of job opportunities we have in uh, software development, in in uh, business analytics, in programming, in uh, uh, another area where Australia is focusing heavily is on cyber security. So there are a lot of job opportunities we have in this area. Next one is uh, finance and accounting. Now finance and accounting, uh, that also provides wide range of job opportunities, be it uh, uh, banking, be it financial services, be it, uh, be it uh, corporate tax, be it auditing. Right. If the international students have some understanding of uh, Australian accounting, there are a lot, of, a lot of job opportunities we have in this sector. The next one is healthcare and aged care. Now, this is uh, one of the very, very important sectors for Australia uh, as a country. And uh, we have seen in the past that a lot of people uh, have got fast tracked PR uh, who are working, who are part of this sector. So people uh, who are working uh, International students who are working in uh, hospitals or in clinics or in in aged care centers, right, uh, have a lot of job opportunities. But you need to have that uh, empathy. You need to have that uh, uh, collaboration, understanding to work in this sector. The next one is education and tutoring. Uh, we all know that Australia is uh, the the global education hub. Right, a lot of internationals come to, to Australia. So there are a lot of job opportunities we have as um, 
uh, teaching assistants or uh, or uh, language uh, support or in as, as tutors in schools in colleges in uh, in language centers another area which has a lot of job opportunities sales and marketing right uh, this is global phenomena every every company every industry every country need the the dynamic professions from sales and marketing so if you're a sales professional if you're into into marketing maybe uh, brand management into marketing analysis there are a lot of job opportunities we have in this sector as well uh, another area which is gaining a lot of importance lately is agriculture and farming right uh, if you are physically fit if you are willing to work in outdoor environment you can work as as uh, a, there are jobs in fruit picking in farm hand uh, as uh, agriculture liberal these are these are seasonal seasonal jobs and these are there and there are a lot of jobs in uh, in regional areas the next one is engineering and construction so if you are studying in studying engineering or any related discipline i know there are a lot of job opportunities we have in as a civil engineer as uh, as uh, uh, structure in structural designing uh, environmental engineering uh, in project manage, project management so this uh, area is also very very important in australia the last but not certainly the but certainly not the least creative arts and design if you have the <laughs> passion for creativity uh, you know uh, you like photography videography animation uh, content creation there are a lot of jobs we have in creative and arts and design as well so in a nutshell uh, uh, there are a lot of job opportunities we have in australia we pick up any sector and if you have required skills attributes uh, you will get a job as part timer in australia now uh, coming to now you know that uh, these are the job opportunities we have in australia as part timer right uh, so how do you get those job opportunities let's start with starting out you know identifying your career goals then what do you want to be right down the line after 1 3 5 years where do you self down the yourself at, at some stage in future so very clearly you have to develop a road map right 1 year 3 year 5 years where where you want to reach so what are your short term goals what are your long term goals once you have designed you know people who design their life they reach in their designed destination people who don't design their life they always more often than not they 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 they, they land in undesigned uncharted territory so i'm sure if you are part of this you are listening to this session you want to design your life well so it's very important you clearly focus on first years three years work one year three year five year goals and you review your goals on a weekly basis right and if there is a need you revise restructure refine your plan every week to make sure that you are closer to your goals you can also seek career guidance there are a lot of institutions who have this success coach you can meet them you can discuss with them you can attend workshop webinars on career planning and industry focused sessions begin ahead formulate your plan during the first year maximize the resources and opportunities provided by your institution right uh, focus on developing your skills soft skills uh, your uh, skills uh, which will help you in the long run right never compromise i've seen that some students who come here they focus lot on earning right uh, so in my opinion they sacrifice their long term interest for the sake of short term interest so please don't do that as an international student you will get a lot of job opportunities but you have to ensure that you honor your your study commitments you get your degrees you focus on soft skill and then uh, continue to work also for some period of time to ensure that you 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 live a pretty decent life in australia you can ask uh, to to identify your career goals ask your, your, yourself you know what are some of my strengths and aversions what are some of my areas of opportunities what are my interests and passion and envision your ideal career where what i would like to do uh, in my future what will be preferred job and desired workplace along with reason behind your choices now it may so happen that some students would not have the clarity there could be confusion it is absolutely clear right it is understandable that you not do not have that now there are a lot of websites you know australia has created that myfuture.edu.au that's a wonderful website uh, 
you can go to this website. You can just sign up and there are certain details you need to fill in. That's you'll see the section of activities, right? You fill in your qualification, you fill in your uh, experience. Then there's a section called values. You fill what are your personal values, right? When so you do that, then it will narrow down. The system will narrow down. It will give you three to four options, which will, which is very, which will be very, very close to your interest. Additionally, you can go to external career counselors. They conduct the psychometric test and uh, then they validate what you have given the psychometric testing by interviewing you. They will, they will help you narrow down and get three to five options which will suit it for your career. Moving on to the next, start, uh, next uh, slide, start early strategies for, uh, for self. Enhance knowledge and confidence. And how do you enhance your knowledge and confidence? By attending career fairs, webinars for knowledge and self-development. You prioritize self-development, both technical and soft, in your first year. Always remember that technical skills will help you get a job, but this is your soft skill, which will help you reach places. If you have to grow in your career, you need to have a very strong soft skill. That's something you need to focus in first year, second year, third year of your stay in Australia. Secure part-time work experience, reaping the following benefits. Now, there are multiple advantages if you work as part-timer. You can gain potential referees and establish Australian employment history. Right? You, you have a good credit history. You showcase reliability, time management, and trustworthiness. If you work, you become dependable at work right? by your hard work. You manage your time well, and uh, you show tr trustworthiness. Right, uh, That will help you in the long run. Remember that trust is the foundation of any relationship. So first year, when you get any job, you've got to make sure that you manage your time well, you finish your task in the same time, and you come across as a person who can be reliable. Expand intercultural knowledge and enhance interpersonal skills, particularly speaking and listening. Now, this is very, very important. You have a good communication skill. You are able to communicate well. You are able to articulate and, ex articulate and explain yourself well. Listening is equally important because that will help you gain more knowledge. At the same time, whichever industry you are working in, it will be able to answer you or solve uh, any queries or problems effectively and appropriately. The next one is cultivate cooperation, initiative, and teamwork through collaboration. Now, uh, one of the, the qualities which every employer is looking is collaboration, right? How good we are team player. So this is something you will, you will learn uh, when you work as a part-timer. You will also be uh, uh, connected with diverse individuals. Australia is a country of migrants. There will be a lot of people from different countries. So you get to meet with them, you, you will work with them. That's how you will also expand your social and professional network. Now, uh, another thing is volunteering. Uh, how can you start volunteering and what are some of the advantages? We'll see that in this slide. Volunteering will boost your confidence and it will also expand your skills, your skill set through volunteering. You can engage with local community to showcase your initiative, teamwork, cultural alignment, and communication skills. Besides that, you know this will also give you a lot of sense of fulfillment when you do volunteering. You can explore uh, formalized volunteer roles in non-profit organizations. There are a lot of uh, uh, NGOs. We have Go Volunteer, Australian Volunteer Search. You can be part of these NGOs. Now, uh, it's just not volunteering. You know, you will have a sense of satisfaction. But besides that, there are a lot of other benefits as well. You acquire valuable experience and skills that enhances your resume, right? You come across as a person who's social, right? Who wants to give back to the society community. You expand your Australian network and foster friendship within your adopted community. Since you have decided to come to Australia, I'm sure you want to build your network in Australia. And this is one of the major platform you have to build your network. You get keen insight into Australian lifestyle and workplace culture. How Australian work, you know, what is their work, their, their, their culture, their lifestyle? You get exposed to that area as well. You develop English language proficiency and interpersonal skills by interacting with diverse individuals of various ages and ethnicities. Now, uh, most of the people who come from uh, come to Australia from, from Asian countries, we have uh, uh, good proficiency, but uh, there is always an opportunity to make it better. And that's how what happens. That's what happens when we interact with diverse set of individuals from different countries. 
and most importantly, we obtain local referees to strengthen our professional references. Now, this is very, very important when you are going for any job, you are hunting for a house, you always need the professional references who will watch for you, who will endorse you for that position or that that uh, that that place. So it is very, very important. We have some people who will watch for us. So volunteering will help you get those references. Now coming to networking, it's very, very important. And how can you uh, build network? Uh, some of the, uh, you know, uh, the areas which we cover is professional associations. Become a member of industry specific associations like CPA, right? If you're from the, the accounting background or if from engineering background, you can you can you can be you can be part of Engineers Australia or the Australian uh, Computer Society. So there are different domains, different sectors, different groups based on your area of interest. Engaging networking events, conferences, information sessions organized by this association. It could be in person, it could be online virtual, right? It gives you, when you attend online, you get people from across the globe. You can build your wider network. That's the advantage of building professional association. You can also be part of clubs and societies. When you join an actively participate in club and society, right? You, you are able to exchange ideas information you learn from each other you learn you help other and that's how we, we we learn from each other and grow collectively additionally you can part of part you can be part of sporting team there are a lot of sports team we have we know that the sports you know foster teamwork right uh, it also make us physically fit so you can be part of sporting teams as well now coming to the slide uh, what Australian employees are looking for primarily there are two things where what Australian employers are looking for majorly. One is your technical skills, concrete and measurable abilities such as holding specific degrees or certifications, language proficiency, knowledge of laws or policies, typing and proficiency in using computer software packages or any other related discipline where there is a job opportunity. And the next one is soft skill intangible qualities, including effective communication, listening, teamwork, empathy, initi initiative, emotional intelligence, how to well you know yourself and others, and accordingly regulate, regulate yourself, time management and organization skills. But these are skills are very, very important in your personal as well as in your in your uh, office setup. Technical, skill, technical skills are primarily used initially in the recruitment process, process to assess potential employees, However, it is a soft skill that typically determined during the interview process, which individual is the right fit for the company, team and role, right? So it is very important that we have the required technical skill, but at the same time, we continuously uh, develop uh, our, our capability on soft skills. It could be communication style, it could be passion, it could be logical reasoning, it could be emotional intelligence, teamwork, leadership. We need to constantly develop these skills. Now, next slide talks about communication. I can't emphasize enough on communication because this is the lifeline. Right? Better we are able to uh, communicate uh, 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 in English language, higher the chances we will land better job. So written as well as spoken English. So clear and concise written communication, including emails, letters, reports with appropriate grammar, tone and context. Active listening and confident participation in workplace conversation, both social and work work related. Related, engage in casual water cooler conversation, which means small talk. The small talks are underrated, so we need to know that how to to strike the conversation, how to build the conversation. We should have the ability to to interact with people across all levels, right? If we are part of any service industry, how can we proficient? We need to be proficient in telephone and customer service skills, effective interaction with superiors and team members, and successful communication in meetings. Now, another important area uh, where, which uh, very often get uh, ignored is or neglected is body language indicators such as eye contact, posture, personal space and handshakes. This is very, very important. So when we interact, engage with any individual, uh, be professionally or be it in a social uh, setup, uh, you know, we come, we should come across as a person who is, who is friendly, who is amenable personality, who is easy to get along. Right. So we need to have the continuous effort 
to ensure that we develop this uh, this this skill. Uh, verbal communication skills uh, for interviews include introducing oneself, addressing behavioral questions, analyzing case studies. This is something we'll discuss in the next few slides. Now, here are some ideas to improve your communication skills. You can enroll in short courses to improve pronunciation and written abilities. There are a lot of crash courses available online. You can expand your network and college. There are a lot of uh, social platform you have where you can go and be part of those, those groups like Clubhouse. Uh, you can join club societies to broaden your network, gain knowledge and enhance vocabulary. Familiarize with local culture. Learn local slang and become acquainted with cultural norms. Observe communication styles of different people from different backgrounds, uh, from different countries. Pay atten attention to how students communicate as a way of to learn and improve. So you have to be very, very good observer, very good listener, and then you need to continuously practice to ensure that your communication skill is par excellence. It's outstanding. Now, next slide talks about uh, the Australian recruitment cycle. Uh, stay informed about recruitment. Stay updated on recruitment cycles of major companies in your industry and the specific skill they seek. There are a lot of gra graduate roles and internships. Explore, you can explore opportunities for graduate roles and winter internships. Application windows typically open in late February and close by the end of April or early May. There are also winter inter, uh, internships are usually which are conducted in June, July. There are a lot of commencement of graduate rules as well. Graduate rules com commonly, uh, you know, the openings in February. University career fairs and sessions that happens. University typically organize job fair on campus, uh, on campus employee session, which uh, helps typically in the month of March and April. There are also vocation and internship rules. For summer positions, usually the opening comes in November to February placements. Likewise, for vocation and internship roles often are, are also available in July and August. But these all are, are dynamic. So you have to continuously look your, uh, your college website, university website, uh, uh, talk to uh, headhunters uh, uh, to ensure that you are updated on all the all the interviews on the uh, 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 job opportunities. Next one is how to apply, uh, apply for work. You need to cultivate a global network by utilizing social media platform effectively. Create a personalized and targeted resume and cover letter for each application. Uh, more often than not, I've seen that uh, the candidates use the same uh, resume for all the job application. And most of the time, their, their, their application gets rejected. So what we need to do is we need to go through every job position. We need to go through the job description, and then we have to evaluate our resume. We got to make sure that we include those things which we have done, which are required in the job description. I'm not asking you to, to manipulate your resume. What I'm trying to tell you is that uh, sometimes it so happens that we create one standard resume, uh, but we have those skills which is mentioned in the job description that is not included in the resume. So most of the companies used uh, AI, the companies have the AI based uh, 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 selection process, which means they get thousands of resumes, uh, uh, which is which is uh, very, very labor intensive for recruiters to examine every resume. The system evaluate every resume and they look at the keywords mentioned in the job, job description vis-a-vis -vis the resume. If those keywords are not mentioned in the resume, the system will reject those resumes. So you got to make sure that you read the read their job description accordingly, modify your resume based on your education experience. And another important thing, your cover letter has to be very, 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 very compelling, appealing. So make sure you take some time to create your cover letter. Prioritize quality over quantity when it comes to job application and networking effort. You selectively uh, apply for a job, but make sure that you you understand the company well, you understand the role well, you update your resume when you apply for these positions. Profile companies you aspire to work for and proactively pursue relevant roles, depending upon your, your uh, qualification, right? Define which are the companies suited to start kickstart your, your career 
and accordingly begin your career, career journey. Uh, ideally, uh, it will be easier to start career in smaller organization, gain valuable experience and exposure, and then, then, then move further. Now, uh, how do you apply for work? Some of the effective job strategies, such, such uh, strategies mentioned here. Explore the career section of company websites and online newspapers. Right, you can use various uh, uh, job sites tailored to your industry and join prominent recruitment platform like Seek, Indeed, and LinkedIn to receive customized job email alerts. Now, LinkedIn is a very, very powerful platform, right? Which is free. Right? We have globally we have close to about 875 million users, and the the algorithm is such that the system is such that based on your education experience. They will give you. Uh, they will prompt the job which suits you, and we have very easy job, up to, uh, easy apply option on LinkedIn. So maximize this this job boards to get job. Utilize your institution's career service, which offers targeted entry level positions online. Right. Be in touch with your uh, success coach, uh, your career counselors, uh, with your university representative to ensure that you get all the updates with regards to job opportunities. Establish a professional profile on LinkedIn. Follow key companies to stay updated. Right, uh, you you can create your personal brand on LinkedIn. That's a very powerful platform. Leverage your network by engaging in conversation, making cold calls, or submitting speculative applications. Right, you have to put in a lot of effort initially to ensure that you get jobs. So apply all these techniques, and I'm sure uh, uh, you'll find some good job matching your your skill set. Now, finally, coming uh, to the D-Day, uh, for example, you have uh, gotten all the required skills. You have developed your practical skills, your soft skill, technical skills. Now, eventually, you have to demonstrate that on your D-Day. That's when the rubber hits the road, right? So you have to prepare for the interview, plan and prepare for both in-person and virtual, virtual interviews by organizing your travel and becoming familiar with the interview platform. Conduct a dry run to ensure smooth connectivity. You can do a dry run with your, with your close ones or, or, or with your friends. Dress professionally to make a positive impression. Understand the interview type and participants. Determine the type of interview it will be, whether it will be a panel interview, it will be uh, one on one assessment centers is something which just happens over a period of time that takes two days. We have a number of assessors. We have different techniques, different dimensions are used. So very few organization uses assessment center, but by and large, it will be one on one interviews or the panel interviews. But you take those mock interviews to make sure that you are ready for those uh, those kind of interviews. Probably research the company. Refresh your knowledge about the company by reviewing its key clients, projects, and core business. Familiarize yourself with the, their products, services, their line of business, their business model. Uh, if you know who is going to interview, you can see his or her profile on LinkedIn. See if there are any common threads where you can you can build some kind of you know wrap uh, uh, while uh, discussion during the interview. How do you prepare some examples? Have prepared examples that showcase your skills aligned with the qualities the company is seeking. Be ready to demonstrate how you have developed those skills, right? Look at the company's mission, vision, values. Vision stands for where company want to be at some stage in future. In company's mission statement talks about the, what's if their purpose of statement. And every company has certain values that talks about their guiding principles means what kind of behavior you will demonstrate when you work for any company. So look at those mission, vision, values. Look at your personal values and see what kind of match you have and what. So so when you talk the same language during the during the interview, during the discussion, they will have better appreciation for your profile. Also mention visa status. Be prepared to explain your student visa and what, or whatever visa you are on. Sales pitch, sales pitch, craft a compelling introduction that focuses on professional respect. Right, the first two minutes are very, very important. So you should be able to make very, very powerful sales pitch. Behavioral situation questions. Uh, most of the interviews will have behavioral or situation based questions. The reason being, you cannot fake it because there will be a series of follow up questions, and if you are you are faking it, you will get caught. So, uh, but at the same time, if you know that you you can prepare well, you should be able to structure your thoughts well. You can use the STAR technique. That's that's that stands for situation, task, action, and results. 
So using this technique, <clears throat> sorry, we can answer all the questions. Uh, for example, uh, somebody asked you, tell us about uh, a, a challenging assignment you accomplished in your in your study time. So maybe you can answer that. Uh, I'm just giving a hypothetical example. Uh, you can say that uh, there was a time when uh, I was told to lead a group of people and submit a project uh, in three weeks time. Uh, but I had never done this kind of thing before, so I had never led a team. So I consulted my professor. I sought his advice and guidance. Then I researched about the topic. I gained a lot of knowledge. I shared all those information with my team members uh, and gained acceptability. Then after listening to my ideas, thought process, my team members, other uh, team members for the project also got actively engaged, uh, participated in that project. We did a uh, brainstorming session. And after in three weeks time, we came with a very good project. We submitted that project uh, to the to the professor within the given timelines and which was uh, very well received. The professor was very happy. Now you map it against the star technique. The situation was you were supposed to lead a project which uh, and which was required to be submitted in three weeks time. The task was that you have to lead the team and you had not done it before. So the action you have taken, you sought the guidance from your professor. You did the research. You shared with your team members and you were all able to work together as a one single cohesive unit. And the result was very, very positive. You were able to submit the result to the project in three weeks time. So uh, you can use this technique. You can try asking this kind of difficult question so that you are well prepared for the interview and you can outperform the other students who do not know this technique. Project confidence through eye contact, confidence, uh, confident body language. You should look calm, composed, confident. Uh, assertive during your interview, right? Uh, you cannot be down close your eyes. You should look at uh, the interviewer's eye. You should come across a person who is, who is friendly, who is easy to talk to, and who is culturally fit for that organization. And lastly, ask insightful questions. Engage the interview by asking thoughtful questions about work culture, training, and development. So by asking those two, three questions, you'll come across as a person who is genuinely interested and also someone who is intelligent, very, very, you know, serious about the career. With this, uh, I we have come to the end of this session. Uh, uh, finally, I would say that, uh, you know, you all as an international students, you are at the cusp of change. I would like to share uh, one advice which was shared by my professor during my college days. Uh, he was a math professor. He told us that you guys have two options. The first option is you enjoy your first five years of your career life and struggle the whole life. And the second option is you work very, very hard these five years and enjoy your rest of your life. Now, all the students, all of us have chosen the career. Some of my team members, colleagues have become CEO, business heads. They're working international on international assignments. Uh, unfortunately, a few of them are, are still struggling to, 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 to get me to ins meet. So that's what the life is all about, right? We are free to choose uh, uh, the, the option, but we are not free of the consequences we have. So you guys have wonderful opportunity. If you're part of this session, I'm sure you want to design your life well. But remember that slow and steady wins the race. Uh, you have got all the required information uh, uh, that how can you be successful in Australia? What kind of job opportunities well you have? And I've also shared some some interview tips techniques in your for your job search, which will help you not only uh, in your Australian journey, but it will also help you wherever you are, whichever country you are in, you can, that will help you in your job hunt. With this, uh, I close this session. Uh, I hope that you would have found this session useful, helpful. I'll be happy to take uh, any questions you guys have. Thank you so much, Nagendra, sir, for an insightful and uh, engaging session. Uh, but uh, we had a couple of questions, but uh, everything was related to the migration. And uh, so our uh, migration agents will be able to help the participants in this. 
and we are asking them for their uh, contact details for the same. So this brings an end to our session. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining in. Thank you so much, Nagendra sir, for your uh, advice on the job uh, in Australia. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.